Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be discussing military sambo. So, we're going to be looking at the great Igor Akimov and his work. It's a an hour long DVD. Of course, I'm not going to dive into the whole thing, but I will say that my work is protected under the law of fair use and this DVD is a great indicator that anything in conjunction with grappling can always be a plus meaning don't only learn how to hit vital spots or eye gouging or fish hooking the mouth all these with decent grappling can always be good but on their own of course little to no effect so first let's start with very basic hand-to-hand -hand combat someone's gripping breaking the finger is far easier than you think and just isolating one finger whether it's on your throat or on your shirt is very easy you see uh, valente brothers do it the Gracies do it i've discussed a meiji book that has this type of finger lock and they were banned in judo in 1899 i believe or around the turn of the century so they were quite effective and quite dangerous as well as wrist locks here you see when someone is willing to commit to their grip and in fights they will do that the easier it is for you again granted that you train this enough with resistance so hand-to-hand -hand combat is great it needs constant uh, repetitions and training and with aliveness so now let's go into more judo type uh, defense so someone's gripping you and first you isolate one arm and here that punch is actually ready when you turn to let go of the grip or to break the grip you need to turn your waist it generates a lot of force now this one here is very cool so you grab both sleeves you kick the groin that alone will create that collapsed man in front of you and here at the elbow level you grab the the sleeve and then you turn it will bend the elbow which will minimize the distance where you can exploit it and insert your hips and from there you can do a classic sode tsurikomigoshi or you can finish it with whatever you want underneath the hips like hanegoshi haraigoshi and of course uchimata but the sleeve grip is quite classic and you'll see in just a moment um, in competition today very rarely you see this variation but here uh, I was surprised to see it and uh, I really like this variation so let's take a look at the old classic Kodokan DVD and it shows you this basic variation so what we do today is either break the grip or from double sleeves is when we do this technique but here it shows that if someone is really adamant on keeping their uh, tsurite you cannot break it like here for example you can always bend the elbow because technically it's still the same technique you are still uh, lifting and pulling and fishing with the sleeve and then using your hips to throw them hence the name of the technique so if you cannot break the grip bending the elbow and grabbing the sleeve on the elbow level is always an option and here you see and the uh, military sambo so of course sacrificing techniques can always be done from these positions uh, a kick to the groin um, followed by a sacrificing technique i like that he brought the arm the second arm in because it's easier for you to lock um, it's one of those rare techniques or rare tricks for the arm lock so here someone is really pushing that's a great way to catapult themselves with tomoe nage and make sure you get on top for control uh, of course sacrificing techniques are not the best choice in street fights or even the battlefield of course but they are quite effective if you know how to surprise your opponent not only that you need to make sure the environment is safe for you because you yourself uh, can injure yourself maybe rocks or anything that can bump your head your spine etc so of course 
can always go for standing locks like the old jujitsu days here you see and of course you can arrest a quick question to the military people watching this do soldiers or anyone in the army carry handcuffs or is it just the police i'm wondering so again going back to the finger snaps and the finger locks you, once you isolate one finger it is very fragile against your entire hand and your body going in one particular way so you can easily break it remember that and here you can lock the elbow and arrest them so now let's go to something slick and cool so we're gonna see a classic ashi barai so someone grips you do an atami with the knee either to the groin or to the stomach or to the side and here as they bend over you can tug them towards you which will make their feet actually very light and uh, will make them very easy to sweep and i'll show you a competition example in just a minute so it can be either okuri ashi harai sending foot sweep so you sweep the far foot with the close foot according to the definition of the kodokan so sweeping away towards the other foot you're sweep sweeping it with the foot that you make contact with or the foot that is advanced only solely and of course the the hands they need to do a lot of work in order to guide someone down or to push and pull so let's take a look at competition example so like i said when you tug on someone especially after you strike them in the gut look at the weight on their foot it becomes almost zero as they're trying to move and try to regain their balance here is another example you see how easily they get swept and here a few movements that needs to be done but as you notice the upper body there's a tug there's a good kuzushi and it's just like any throw so um, all the principles of a throw apply Kuzushi, Tsukuri, and Kake. So, next, um, I want to talk about eye gouges and fish hooking the mouth. This is a good Tayotoshi here. So, again, in conjunction with proper and decent grappling, they're a plus. They're as a tool to aid your grappling. So, all these martial arts that say, oh, we focus on these vital points. And... Uh, there's no force and I just apply the right pressure. No, in conjunction with your grappling like the old days, they can only be a plus. So now here we go into classic scooping throws. So as he attempted a morote gari, uh, his head was stuck. So he transitioned to a scooping throw. And here you can see the basic form of the uh, scooping throw. If you get locked from behind, you hit the groin and then you scoop up the legs and here you see the basic form of it for self great for self-defense and uh, make sure you s go around the legs so you can get full control and of course here you see more of the competition variation you can grab one leg and scoop up while the other controls the upper body or both leg and get a big lift and then slam down this is different than collecting the legs and diving down. That would be morote gari. So uh, this reminds me of this uh, little Hickson demonstration. Again, you see here how he pushes on the face. If you complement it with maybe in a finger to the eye or a fish hook to the mouth, it can always be a plus, but it's not a martial art or something you can base a martial art on. With grappling, anything that's added, it's a plus to your grappling. That's how you should focus on it. At least that's how I see it. So here you see more uh, Georgian grip with uh, hip techniques and you can finish them off. So uh, if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.